Oh my god. I was about to go to bed, but I got an important uh, message from somebody. I uh, popped some melatonin for sleeping purposes, so my brain's kind of turning to mush. But the question was, if, if a photon comes out of, an, out of an atom, let's say that an atom decays and as a result of an atom decaying it decides to emit a photon or, or a beta particle or anything else it decides to kick out of itself, what was it before it was emitted? Okay, well, let's think about that for a second in a kind of simplistic and conceptual way. So, you have an atom. One of the protons turns into a neutron, one of the neutrons turns into a proton, um, an alpha particle is emitted, something like that. One of those forms of decay. Now the atom's all excited afterwards, its nucleus is excited. The nucleus is where all the protons and neutrons are. They have extra energy. Basically put, they have a nice flat ground state that they want to go to. Think of it like a waiter walking by with a bunch of dishes in their hands, and if they are, if the dishes are well balanced, everything works fine, the waiter walks fine. But basically put, sometimes you have a waiter that has a couple too many dishes in the wrong spot, if you know what I mean, and they, 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 they kind of stumble around and the dishes fall everywhere, and good God, I look weird. Everything's orange looking, my skin's all orange looking, and here I am lying in my bed looking strange. But anyway, uh, so you have the um, atom, and the, the, the atom has decayed, and it has the surplus energy it has to get rid of. This energy is probably locked in the form of kinetic energy inside of the nucleons, and the nucleons are the protons, the neutrons. They're moving around, and there's a force that binds them together. It's called the strong nuclear force, and they have something called quantum chromodynamic binding energy, and it holds all of this stuff together. Basically, in the same way you have two magnets that are held together by a field of magnetic force, oops, I hit the camera, you actually also can have a field of gluon particle, yeah, gluon, like glue, that's actually what they're called, I'm not just, you know, tripping off of melatonin and making this stuff up, or am I? But anyway, uh, gluon particle fields uh, 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 exist in between the protons and the neutrons, and this holds them together, and if they're in a nice, perfect, absolutely beautiful symmetry, there's no real surplus energy left over. Everything is nice and 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 harmonic, etc. Um, there's a there's a resonance basically, but if that isn't correct because there's too much energy or whatnot, what'll happen is that that has to be released. The extra energy has to be released. This is the next part I have to get into and this is before I finish this whole thing, what is energy, what is matter? Well, matter and energy are not as distinct as you might think. Um, string theory is trying to answer some of this. String theory is still a little cloudy in some of this. We're all cloudy in this. Hell, I'm cloudy in some of this. And anyone who says that they understand all of this and have it down, suspect them. Because most of the best physicists out there don't even understand this stuff. And I'm not even a physicist. I'm a lay person. So if I can even spell physics, that's uh, supposed to be good. I like to go a little bit beyond that. But basically put, when you were young, you knew that there were molecules. Water, you know, and stuff like that. And then you found out that that's not right. That's not really true. They're actually made up of atoms. And then as you get a little older, they're like, well, we're sort of lying. Atoms aren't like a little colored ball, you know, one blue one for hydrogen and one, you know, green one for oxygen. You discover that atoms are made of electrons and protons and neutrons and all that sort of stuff. Okay, so everything's going fine. Then all of a sudden they come to you and say, well... You know how we said there's electrons and protons and neutrons? Well, we lied. It's actually a little bit more complicated than that. The electrons are just electrons. But the protons and neutrons are each made up of three little tiny particles that are smaller, called quarks. There are six basic types of quark. They have arbitrary, random arbitrary names that mean nothing other than to keep them distinct. There are top and bottom, up and down, charmed and strange. And these little quarks have different properties. Now, what is a quark? What is a quark made of? Well, some would probably say a quark is made of a quark. It's not, it's a fundamental building block. It is a dimension. Is it a dimensionless particle? I believe it's a dimensionless particle. Uh, it just kind of is. But 
Um, string theory would go into explaining how it's, uh, what does string theory say about quarks? I believe they are uh, tiny little membranes that are, tiny little string uh, filaments that are, are folded like little membranes, I think off the top of my head. I'm sure that a um, string theorist will come in here and beat me over the head with a tuna for getting that wrong. But basically put in the simplistic manner is a quark is a state that energy can be in in which it perfectly sinks. It's a good example for this. Energy can exist in our universe in several distinct states. Think of them like perfect little resonating little waves, if you like. And there are a certain number of allowed states and certain number of properties, and they can be in certain positions. And you know what? To a degree, it's just because the universe allows it to be that way. And when we figure out a grand unifying theory of everything, we'll know why that's exactly the case. But regardless, um, Whenever you have energy that's surplus, that energy can be released to in the form of, of one of these little matching configurations that's allowed. For example, a photon. Photon is really, really open to interpretation as far as the universe is concerned, and that's why you have so many different er energies of photon. Um, when a proton has too much energy and has to release it, it'll usually release a photon. I mean, technically, I guess you could probably coax a um, proton into emitting an electron or something, but you'd have to have the right amount of energy, the right exact states, and everything met. It gets kind of complicated. You have to get state vectors and everything like that all correct. So, does that answer your question? The photon doesn't exist inside of the atom, per se. It's It would be like asking... Um, where does the fire exist inside of the lighter before you light it? Well, it doesn't. It's fuel, it's spark from the flint, it's things that come together for it. Well, in this case, in the atom, the, the extra mass converts into energy, and you have something called an isomeric transition. So if I've rambled on enough, maybe that helps to explain it a little bit. And keep in mind, I'm not a physicist, so maybe physicists would help you even more than I would. I'm a layman who just happens to know a little bit about physics and does gamma spectroscopy and, you know, does all kinds of crazy stuff, but whatever. And it's also in melatonin, so my brain's melting and dripping out of my ears. But anyway, all right, well, this is Tom from anti-proton.com giving you a crappy video on my crappy iPhone, which I'll hopefully get rid of soon. And, um, bye-bye.